I should be very specific. So C. diff is a big problem. It, uh, just to give you some context, um, it's the leading hospital-acquired infection. It affects uh, half a million people a year. Um, recurrent disease is very common. Um, close to 30% of individuals have recurrent disease. And treatments are awful. Um, they just don't work. Uh, antibiotics work about 30% of the time and are very, very expensive. Um, they did this high quality study, a randomized control study, the studies that changed hearts and minds of doctors. And they had to stop the study early because the fecal transplant works 90% of the time and antibiotics only works 30% of the time. So it'd be unethical to proceed. And so the treatments in the past have been just cycles and cycles of antibiotics without a response, whereas fecal transplant gets to the heart of the issue and addresses it directly, which is the missing good bacteria. So the FDA is one of our allies and our partners. We're, you know, they're very thoughtful about this space and it's, it's unique. It's a unique regulatory environment and we really appreciate the, the listening power of, of the FDA and actually responding to this very unique space. And the way that it kind of works and the way that I think about it from a simple perspective is there's the green light, there's the red light, and there's the like yellow light. So green, green light means like FDA approved, ready to go, awesome. Red lights, FDA not approved, you can definitely not use the the treatment. Fecal transplant sits in the amber light, the yellow light. Um, it's able to be used under enforcement discretion for Clostridium difficile not responsive to standard therapy, meaning these are the patients that have failed medical therapy and have not, do not have a lot of other options left. Potentially a colectomy, which is very, very, you know, scary and dangerous at times, uh, and potentially just long-term antibiotics, which are very costly and not particularly effective. Um, so that's kind of where it sits now. For all other indications outside of Clostridium difficile, you require an investigational new drug application. Um, and so we're exploring many different areas, including ulcerative colitis and inflammatory bowel disease and a number of indications, but we're doing that under the auspice of uh, FDA's IND approval process. My heart goes out to those that are uh, desperate to turn to home fecal transplants. I strongly do not recommend it. Um, we spend a lot of time thinking about safety, and I was mentioning to you, you know, there's a lot of interest that, the, that my, fecal transplants and the microbiome can cure a lot of diseases potentially, but it also has the potential to cause a lot of diseases as well in the same space if we use the same analogy. And so we need to be extremely cautious about the safety profile and open biome, that's our number one priority and why we continue to get more rigorous from a safety perspective. We're an open source model, we're open access, and that means we iteratively get better all the time because we hear the feedback of clinicians and researchers um, and, and patients to say, oh, are you guys thinking about adding this? And we're like, that's a great idea. We should do that. Or we say, oh, it doesn't make sense and this is why. And so we have a clinical advisory board, 12 of the leading experts in this space that sit and think with us quarterly to understand what and how do we get safer and better. There's some really emerging, interesting data uh, that's emerging around ulcerative colitis as part of a group that um, completed a randomized control trial for fecal transplants for ulcerative colitis um, that is just kind of about to be published, which I can't speak too much about, but um, it's a very interesting and promising space. Um, the, the reality is that it's not going to be like Clostridium difficile where it works 90% of the time and any donor works almost every time. It's going to be very, very targeted. We talk about personalized medicine a lot. There's going to be an element of that. So it's about how do we figure out the ideal donor and how do we figure out the best way of actually treating patients and it's not going to be the same. I mean, I think the goal is to, to change epidemiology of recurrent Clostridium difficile. That's where we actually see. So I would think not necessarily about the number of treatments sent out, but have we seen in the curve of the incidence of C. difficile? Are we seeing a decline in the recurrence? And to me, that's the ultimate goal. I don't get fixated on numbers. I get fixated on the big picture of how do we actually change the course of the entire disease? Can we prevent people from ever getting recurrent disease is the ultimate vision down the road.